Hello, today I will show you how playing melee in VGA quality looks and works. So, this GameCube is connected with a um, official Nintendo digital analog converter cable, but this cable has been modified for RGB HV video output, which is um, yeah trans. Uh, carried by this VGA cable, yeah, and um, this is a uh, just a normal VGA splitter with a USB power, so that the uh, signal brightness isn't decreased by the splitting. It it um, I only paid eleven euros for this, so this is not really something expensive, and it works really well, and um pretty sure that it's like this, because it's just analog splitting. There isn't anything involved in this that could cause any additional latency. So these VGA cables are wired to this standard LCD monitor and this Sony Trinitron CRT monitor. And now I will just... Ah, and of course the, the, no, the normal um, composite video and audio cables are wired up to um, to this speaker here with 3.5 millimeter audio input. Yeah, because these monitors, they don't have decent um, loudspeakers. So now I'll just turn the GameCube on and you can see that, yeah, what, what Mili looks looks like on these monitors. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry about the the light from from the windows. Maybe I'll shoot this video again when it's darker. Yeah, when I when I zoom into the to the displays, maybe the 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 quality difference of their displays will be visible. So the the LCD image is has very um, uh, has a rather filled looking um, feeling, while when you zoom in on the CRT, you can see the interlay the um, scan lines. But I'm I'm not sure whether this will be visible on 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 the video, but it's it's visible in in real life. So yeah, but both both of these look really really good, and um, not even on the LCD um, you can f um, you can feel any lag. So uh, both of these are really fine for playing. Although I do prefer the Sony CRT because it's probably two uh, or maybe five milliseconds faster than the LCD monitor and it's it's much cheaper. I only paid 20 euros for this monitor and yeah if if you don't already have a monitor you want to use for your 480p setup then I, I really recommend getting a monitor like this. This is a Sony GDM F520, by the way. It has a resolu It um, accepts resolutions up to 2000 by 1500, and its maximum uh, refresh rate is one and 170 hertz, I think. Yeah, but usually, of course, I don't use two monitors at the same time, but rather I use the splitter to connect um, the this this monitor and my capture device 
which is um, uh, built in into my computer. It's the um, StarTech PEX HD cap, which is actually uh, manufactured by the, I think, Taiwanese company, Yuan. And um, it's, it's a pretty high quality device um, that, that usually um, costs much more by other distributors. But it still is a bit expensive compared to the recording devices that most Smashers use. I paid 124 euros for this and I think that it's pretty much the same price in, in US dollars. So if you live in the US, you probably can expect to pay $120 or something for this. And yeah, it, its main features are that it uh, accepts HDMI inputs. So it's capable of Wii recording as well, uh, Wii U recording as well. And uh, has a DVI I port um, that accepts both DVI and VGA if you use these standard adapters. Yeah, so um, that's kind of unique because very few capture cards accept VGA input that, that don't cost $500 or more. Yeah, it, it also has component inputs, but um, the, the picture quality is, is slightly worse. You, you, you can't really see it in, in normal record, recordings because the, the YouTube qual quality is, is not good enough to, to show these differences. But um, yeah, if you, if you zoom in, these differences are, are kind of obvious. So, um, especially because VGA monitors are much cheaper than component TVs and much more available, um, I recommend using the VGA cable. Um, this GameCube VGA cable is usually quite expensive. Um, if, you, if you want to uh, order it from a, from a um, shop, the only one I know is one in Germany where it costs 90 euros. So yeah, that's that's pretty much considering that um, Nintendo originally sold these unmodified cables for 30 euros. Yeah, but well, if you if you look around for some time, maybe you can find um, collectors um, selling their GameCube collection, and they uh, they sometimes offer the, these real cheap. For example, I bought. Um, three of these um, GameCube digital to analog cables for um, only 75 for all three of them and some stu other stuff as well. So yeah, f for that price it's it's really, really a great value because the quality is, is, is really good and all in all this this setup with, with everything is about yeah, close to 200 euros for GameCube and recording device and monitor and mod chip and everything. So that, that's that's pretty cheap compared to, to other 480p setups where you only you also need a, a Wii Wii component cables, the um Ava Media L Live Gamer Portable or a similar device. And also you need a, a TV or monitor that accepts component inputs. Um, and these are are usually more expensive than simple VGA CRT monitors or LCD monitors if you want to use them. Yeah, so now I'll, I'll um, show you the, the capture card um, and its its drivers and how it's use, being used and all of this. So um, the, the card is pretty much, um, yeah, it's, it's really easy to install and I'll use OBS for now because uh, that's likely what you will use as well. So I'll preview the stream. Um. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's that's a problem that that happens sometimes. That the capture card simply will um, not show up. Wait, what do do? Uh, I'll restart the computer and see if, if that helps.
Yeah, but I don't think that it's a problem of the capture card, but rather of my, my computer mainboard. Because it's, um, I think it's slightly damaged, so the pins don't, um, don't have a proper connection, so sometimes it's disconnected or something, I don't know. But let's hope that it will work now. Okay, this time it works. You can see the, the device here. SA7160 PCI. Uh, I'm not sure whether you can read this on the video because screen recording with the camera is, is, is not the best idea, actually. Mm, so I'll preview the stream. Yeah, and here you can see the, the recording quality. Um, yeah, I'll just let two CPUs fight. So you can see what it looks like when, when everything is moving and stuff. So, um, yeah, this is recording at 480p60 right now and scaling it up to, um, 1280 times 720 also at 60 frames per second for the, for the live stream or local recording how whatever you set OBS to to do um yeah the red screen here usually shows the the webcam but it's not connected right now so yeah um the the camera i'm using right now only um it's set to 30 frames per second right now, so you won't see how smooth the video actually is. I will add in another video maybe that that has 60 or 120 frames per second, so the, the differences will be obvious. Yeah, and of course when you're using the capture card, there is some some lag compared to the to the um, the CRT with direct input. And I think it's something like five frames, more or less. So it's it's definitely not playable. But um, the lag isn't too bad for for streaming. So um, you can you can let commentators um, watch watch this screen, and it will still be. Um, I don't think it will be noticeable that there is some there's some delay. But um, compare compare when you compare when the, the players do something and when the comment commentators yeah react to it. Yeah and um, another thing to consider is um, the processor you need for for live streaming. So um, seven um, when you record at or live stream at 720p60 it's pretty much the same processor load as 1080p30 and um well what what i'm using is an intel sandy bridge i3 cpu the 2120 and um it it only works well now that i've um activated the uh the integrated graphic processor unit which um uh uses yeah the, the integrated graphics adapter for encoding the video. So um, this decreases processor load by a lot. Load by a lot. And well I'm not I don't think you can you can see this but the statistics of my computer show that the um, CPU load is only at about twenty percent for the first core and I don't know ten percent for the second core. 
so you can easily do do other things with this PC, and it's it's yeah, it's a really cheap computer. So um, you definitely don't need an i5 or i7 even if you just want to do 720p60 streaming. You just need to configure configure a Sandy Bridge or maybe even a, a Celeron, one of the new ones, which have decent integrated GPUs as well. Yeah, and yeah, configure them well. Yeah, so I think that's it. If if you have any questions that I didn't answer, yeah, just write it in the comments and I'll re reply back, either with comments or maybe I'll do a follow-up with video if there's much stuff that I forgot about. Yeah. Okay. Bye.